The NBA changed the rules and it completely altered how every single team in the league looked at team building except for one. Carl Anthony Towns was traded to the Knicks. The Clippers let Paul George walk in free agency. The Nuggets lost KCP in free agency and so many other moves. All happened because the league literally changed how the rules worked. And all across the league, expensive teams were getting cheaper. They were shedding payroll. They were getting rid of money, except for one team. As everyone else is changing their rosters and shedding money, the Celtics continue to spend more to the point that they're paying two players 50 plus million dollars a year and are projected to be the most expensive team in the league overall the next four years. So what exactly is happening here? Why are all of these other teams, even contending teams, getting rid of salary, making their teams cheaper when the Celtics don't seem to care at all? But before we get to that, I want to talk about opening night of the NBA with the sponsor of today's video, Prize Picks. Here's my lineup for opening night. For Anthony Edwards, we have a free square. If he scores a single point, you can put that in your selection and automatically get that if he scores a single point. I'm also going to go with LeBron more assists, and I'm going to go more on Jason Tatum points as well. And it's just that simple with Prize Picks. You put a couple of selections together, you pick more or less for each, and if you're correct, you win some cash. And one of the other things I really like about Prize Picks as well is those promotions. I talked about the free square with Anthony Edwards on opening night, and you use code sporting to get $50 instantly whenever you play a $5 lineup. So you can put those things together. You can use that free square on opening night. You can use that code as well. And that's just a great way to get your season started with price fix. So again, use that free square, click the link in the description to get $50 instantly when you play a $5 lineup with my code sporting. And thank you again to price fix for sponsoring this video. Well, first we need to understand why the rules changed in the first place. Over the last decade or so, payroll spending in the NBA had gotten out of control. The league operates off of a salary cap model, but it is a soft cap. So essentially every team in the league goes over the set salary cap each season, which is normal. What isn't normal though, is just how much teams were spending over the cap. Teams like the Clippers, Warriors, and others have basically completely ignored any kind of salary restrictions that the NBA has tried to put in place with rosters that were 50 to $70 million above the set salary cap of the league. And you might be wondering if there's a cap on salaries, how are they all going over that number? Well, as I said, the league operates under a soft cap. You can go over that number and almost every single team does every single year, but you can only go over it in certain ways. In free agency, that spending has to be done under the salary cap. You have to have a certain amount of money under the cap to be able to spend on free agents, although there are some exceptions to that. But one of the ways teams get around this salary cap number is they can add more money in a trade within a certain percentage. But by far, the most common way for a team to go over the salary cap is just by re-signing their own players. If you have a player under contract, in most circumstances, circumstances, you have what are called bird rights, which allows the team to ignore the salary cap when re-signing their own player. This happens every single year for pretty much every single team in the league in combination with some other moves. For example, when the Sixers signed Paul George this offseason, they had basically two players on their payroll, Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey. Embiid was on a huge contract, but Maxey was still on his smaller rookie deal. So the Sixers signed George in free agency while they were under the cap, then gave Maxey a huge deal afterwards using Maxey's bird rights to go over the cap. So as I said, basically every team in the league does this to varying degrees but then teams started to spend 50 to 70 million dollars above the salary cap and the league decided to step in and change the rules but you might be wondering why would they bother changing the rules how is teams spending more money hurting the league well one of the main reasons for having a salary cap in the first place is to maintain relatively even salaries across the board so that one team isn't spending way more than the other because they're all capped at the same number and even though pretty much every team in the league goes over the cap every single year not all of them them do it to the same extent because not all of them do as well financially as some of these bigger market teams in LA, New York, and Miami. So those bigger market teams are able to spend more, which gives them a competitive advantage that isn't supposed to be there with the salary cap in place. And if the league didn't do anything about the increased spending, teams were going to continue to spend 50 to $70 million over the salary cap, regardless of anything that they had put into place previously. Because this had been an issue in the past, and not only was it messing with the competitive balance of the league, but also so the owners of the teams didn't want to keep paying that much money. And so they put in some new stuff previously prior to this year. And the biggest of which was the luxury tax, which essentially is a dollar for dollar tax once you reach a certain threshold over the salary cap, which made it that much more expensive to pay for a very expensive team that's 50 to $70 million over the cap. And a lot of owners used that luxury tax threshold as an excuse for why they were not spending as much money on their teams as they were previously. But in that luxury tax era, teams like the Warriors and Clippers that we talked about just didn't care. They had some someone like Steve Ballmer owning the team that just did not care about paying
paying the luxury tax if it meant he could field a more competitive team than some of these smaller market teams could. So when it became clear that just the luxury tax was not enough to limit team spending, the NBA stepped in again and changed the rules for this upcoming season, adding something that I'm sure you've probably heard of called the second apron. Essentially what the second apron does is it makes it that much more restrictive in terms of team building once you reach a certain payroll threshold. You have the salary cap, you have the first apron, you have the luxury tax, and then once you get all the way up to the second apron, which is up near where teams like the Clippers and the Warriors were spending, all of a sudden you have all these different team building restrictions. Rather than going through all of them right now, I will just put them on screen. You guys can pause this and read it if you would like. I'm sure a lot of you have already seen a lot of explanations, including some of my own, about how exactly the second apron works, but the point of it is teams are not as incentivized to spend a ton of money and are restricted in a lot of ways. So now we're seeing teams like the Timberwolves add some financial flexibility by trading away Carl Anthony Towns despite making the conference finals last year. We're seeing the Nuggets be completely okay with KCP leaving and going to Orlando in free agency because they didn't want to continue to add payroll and get close to the second apron. We saw the Clippers try and be smart about the Paul George situation and not give him an extra contract year and thus he ends up going to the Sixers. So all of these other teams are getting rid of money except for one. If you look at the payrolls across the league, if you look at the offseason moves, free agency, guys that are being re-signed to their teams, there is one team that stands out and it is the Boston Celtics. They are completely unafraid of the second apron. They are unafraid of payroll spending, even in the midst of an ownership change. And there is a very simple reason for this. The reason that the rules don't apply to the Celtics, the reason that they don't care about how much money they have to spend, they don't care about re-signing Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Derek White, Drew Holiday, all these guys to new contract extensions, is because they they know that they're going to be good. The reason that the second apron is scary is if you are in the second apron for a couple of years, suddenly you start to have some draft pick penalties. You can't add to your team in any way. Once you get up to that number, your team is basically your team. And so if you run into a situation where guys get hurt or your team isn't as good as you thought that it would be, I think Minnesota is pretty informative in this case in terms of why they traded away Carl Anthony Towns because even though they made the conference finals, they clearly didn't feel like they were going to be an every year contender and they'd rather have that flexibility. And if if you're not an every year contender, being in the second apron not only makes no sense, but puts you at risk of completely bottoming out your franchise. But the Celtics just don't care because they know that they have two extremely durable young wings and Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, that even if everything else around them falls apart, as Drew Holiday gets older, uh, as a bunch of other guys in the roster get older, maybe they get hurt, maybe they have to move some pieces, whatever the case may be, they have those two guys, they're going to be good. And they just got done with one of the most dominant start to finish seasons that we've seen in a very long time in the NBA on their way to a title. Now there is obviously Obviously, the possibility that Boston has made a huge miscalculation here and they're the one team that is ignoring the second apron doesn't seem to be really that afraid of it and all the other 29 teams even the contending teams are doing the right thing by shedding money by getting under this number but Boston clearly feels like the rules just do not apply to them and I honestly I, I can't wait to see if they're right about this.